Hi, my name is Jennifer Luarca, and this short session is going to focus on studying and working with your peers and your faculty using online platforms. It's challenging right now because we are in a virtual space, so oftentimes the methods we would use to study or interact with people, um, we don't really have access to those. We can't just bump into them and you know, meet somewhere on campus to study. We're really having to be mindful about the way we create our study sessions. And it's really important that as we think about our study sessions and working with our peers, that we're thinking about using active learning strategies as much as possible. So um, active learning strategies really focus on the idea of us processing and producing information. Traditionally, uh, students tend to read, uh, listen to lecture, do problems quietly by themselves. Um, these methods are really taught to us at an early age and we use them K through 12. Often some lower division courses we do these strategies, but we want to start to transition out of that method of study into a method of study that requires us to use our voice, to write out answers, to explain things to others, uh, and to practice our knowledge as much as possible. The reason being is we have to produce information on the exams, so we want to make sure that in our study sessions we're being active with the material and we're producing it so that we're well prepared for exams. Now, doing this in an online platform could be challenging. Um, very much so, the virtual space is a passive space where we tend to read and watch a lot, but we want to create space with our peers using online platforms like Zoom or Google Hangouts or even our social media platforms, uh, messengers platforms. Um, we want to create spaces where we're practicing active learning when we're studying with others online. So that might be someone having a set of questions and asking another to explain the answers, or it might be breaking up the material and getting on an online platform where you can practice teaching each other content or reteaching content. Um, using spaces in the virtual space uh, in this way can really help with long-term retention and performance on exams. Now, one thing we know about learning is repetition is very, very important. So as I just said, if you can, you know, of course, you're going to listen to your lecture during the week, you're going to take notes, you're going to sit with that content yourself and work with it a little. But then if you can set up a study session with peers where you go through that content again and you explain things and you create new examples and new ways of learning information and new ways of producing it yourself along with your peers, then that information is going to get into your memory system a a lot faster. Uh, repetition leads to long-term memory. So we want to think about that as we're setting up study sessions and as we're working with our peers. We also want to incorporate as much variety as possible into our learning spaces. So again, we want to be able to explain the concept in our own words. We want to be able to draw a diagram. We want to be able to teach it to an expert using all of the terminology an expert would use, but we want to also be able to teach it to a novice, somebody who might not be familiar with the content at all. If we can move through those different registers, um, we have a really good grasp of the material. So working with your peers in these ways can really, really help you with retention and performance um, later on down the line when it comes to exam time. Now, in terms of connecting with peers, this is an additional challenge we have this semester, is we're not seeing people regularly, we're not bumping into them, we're not casually in the space that others are studying, right? We have to be much more intentional about setting up study time and connecting with our peers. But even though we're in a virtual space that doesn't necessarily lend itself to peer connection, we really need to be intentional about setting up those connections and those study groups. Connections with peers will lead to academic success in your courses, but again, we can't just expect them to happen organically. They're going to need to be, you're going to need to be intentional about setting up study times and about conducting your study sessions in a way that leads to active engagement with the material. One way you can do this is within your first week of school, Reach out to your peers using the class list tab on Beachboard. You'll see here, this is a Beachboard um, page, and you'll see the different tabs. If you hit class list there, the fourth tab in, 
That will give you a list of all of the peers in your class. You can click on their name and send a mass email. So what we want to do is that first week of school, reach out to as many people as possible who wants to set up a study group, get together, organize that group. When are we going to meet? What are we going to do? And start working that way immediately from the very beginning of class. Again, this isn't going to be one of those things where you sit next to someone and you casually have a conversation and eventually you're studying together. You're going to need to be a lot more intentional about connecting with peers. But again, you can have a lot of the same study experiences with your peers. You're just going to have to go about it a little different way. You're going to have to step outside of that comfort zone early on in the semester to make sure you have those important connections. And lastly, when we're talking about uh, maybe some discomfort of connection, uh, we're going to need to connect with our faculty also. I know a lot of students who are hesitant to interact with faculty and that hesitancy is stronger in the virtual space, but it's really critical to your success that you check in with your faculty. And one great way to do this is visiting uh, faculty in office hours. Office hours will be listed on your syllabus. So the first day of class, you typically you go through your syllabus. There'll be office hours posted there, times that you can drop in and probably a meeting ID for Zoom. I would recommend dropping in, introducing yourself, maybe asking a question about the content that was covered or just letting them know, you know, I'm gonna be checking in every once in a while. I'm really interested in doing well in this course. Anything to let the faculty member know that you care and that you're interested, and if you need help, you'll be checking in. Um, faculty will let you know the details on office hours. Again, it may be Zoom, it may be some other platform that they're using. That typically will be on the syllabus, but if there's, um, if it's vague at all the first day, that's a time where you should ask a question of how will we be attending office hours? Um, and if you can't attend office hours, will lead right into this next idea of communication. Um, if you can't attend office hours, you'll just need to let them know. And there's an example here on the screen of how you would do that. It's really, really critical for you to practice professionalism as you interact with your faculty members. Uh, what that means is that you address them with respect using the title they prefer. That will usually be indicated on the syllabus somewhere. So you'll see Dr. So-and-so, Professor So-and-so, or they may just want their first name. Whatever they ask for, you need to do. I know sometimes students are hesitant to use a professor's first name if that's what they want to use, but if that's what the professor is asking, you need to respect that. So address them by their title always. If it's unclear at all, ask. And I would say the default is always Professor So-and-so. So if you're unsure how to refer to them, say, Professor so-and-so, how would you like me to refer to you? And they'll let you know. So pretty simple. Um, when possible, especially because we're online and it's, it's really challenging because we don't get to see faces as much, sometimes it can get confusing in terms of where students coming from, what class they're in. Remember, your professors are not just teaching your one class. They're teaching a lot of classes, sometimes at multiple universities. So what you need to do is usually in the subject section when you're emailing them, let them know your name, your ID, and what school you're from. Uh, and then in the body, you can typically let them know the class meeting information. Um, also, this should be, um, that. well, this is important for you to know that you want to use complete sentences, and you want to, again, try to employ your professionalism as much as possible. So no text speak, no emojis, um, no abbreviations. We want to spell everything out. We want to make sure that it seems professional. Okay, so here's an example. This In the subject line, we would have your name, your ID, and your campus. So for me, Jennifer Luarca, my ID number, and CSULB and maybe the class title, so Anthro 120. Then you're going to say in the body of the message, professor, whatever their name is, I'm in your Anthro class, section 6, Monday, Wednesday at 10. So we're right off the bat grounding ourselves in one of their classes. This helps as a faculty member because it allows us to 
see where you're at and where you're from and I can pull up the roster and I know exactly what class we're talking about. Then you want to follow with what you need. I have questions related to the lecture. I'm unable to attend office hours because I have a different class at that time. Do you have availability another day and time for Zoom? I'm free on these days and times. Thank you for your consideration. Then a sign off with your full name and your ID number. Full name is important and ID number is really important. I teach on campus as well and there are many times I have multiple students with the same name and ID or same name. And so ID is really the thing that differentiates between students in that class. So as much information, identifiers you can provide for the faculty member, the better. And again, professional language always. All right, and that's it for our short workshop. Hopefully you've got some helpful information here. Uh, the idea is that you're putting yourself out there these first few weeks and you're connecting with peers as much as possible. If you wanna follow up or want some extra support in working with communication or study strategies at all, you can make appointments with me for free. Visit the Academic Coaching webpage for more information. Thank you.